Hey folks, Jonathan here. I've uh, been doing some thinking and I think I've come up with another theory on the valves on the Studebaker uh, Golden Hawk. I talked to a buddy of mine and I had mentioned this theory to him because I knew that he had messed with a lot of engines, stuff like I do, antique stuff, old stuff. And he said he ran into the same situation as what I did on this and what I did on the Nash. And one of the things that I thought about and thought maybe was the issue, uh, we have really good intake valves, and which is surprising. And also the Nash had good intake valves. And so that puts it to why was the exhaust valve so pitted? And I think that I've come up with a theory and like I said, I, I talked to him and he's pretty much the same thing because he had one that was the same way. Uh, mice crawled up the exhaust. Uh, they come in the exhaust port, well, on the other side, come in the exhaust port and when they get into ports, they was building nests on top of the, the valves on the inside and mouse urine is real corrosive and there's a really good chance that that's what happened on this engine and on the Nash engine. Of course you've seen the Nash engine was just full of, of uh, acorns where the mice had took them up in there. Now there wasn't any in this but the guy had tried to start it. I know the exhaust was off of it because uh, he had told me that but he had tried to start it, and then I tried to start it, and then I ended up getting it started. So anything that was in there would have gotten blown out anyway. But if you remember, under the intake, we found a mouse. We found uh, a lot of nuts and, and mouse nests under the, uh, or on top of the valley cover uh, on top of the intake. So there's a really good chance that that was our whole issue with this engine is uh, the mice got up the exhaust. The mice got in above the exhaust valves, uh, urinated while they was in there and that urine is what ate up these valves and I am pretty sure that that is a, a correct theory on this and for future reference when I when I go pick up a car or go buy an old car you know whether that exhaust is on it you know make is going to make a difference as to whether I think it's going to be able to be started or if it's going to have to be torn down and, and some repair work done uh, there, you know, this is not like a farm tractor where it rains down the exhaust pipe into the engine. There's got to be a way for moisture or something to get into there. And I'm betting that that's what it is. Now, there's always that possibility, too, that uh, when the guy I got this from, Roy, when he tried to start it, or possibly when I tried to start it, that the exhaust valve opened and let something down in to them cylinders, and that's what, uh, you know, caused our, our pistons to get... Uh, marks on them and get dented and and bend and uh, so that may be the whole you know the whole problem with the whole uh, reason that it was uh, you know we had issues uh, I got I took the Nash valves and went to looking at them and they're basically the same look as what the valves are in the uh, Studebaker engine on the exhaust side so I kind of think that theory is right and I'll you know I'll let everybody else Think about it and, and, and see what you think. Uh, I can't come up with any uh, anything better. And, you know, you, you really want to know what causes this stuff. And I've seen mice, you know, especially on like a 64, 65 Chevrolet pickup, they'll climb up above the windshield and get into that little overhang above the windshield and the urine rusts the inside of it out. Uh, because, you know, the I guess the urine's so caustic. But anyway, that's what I think happened, and uh, just uh, make this a short video, but I did want to tell you another story that I thought was funny. Uh, Noah had told me the other day that he went to school, and some people will know, some people won't, but there's a town up in uh, Pennsylvania, and I, I don't even remember the name of it, but uh, it's been on fire for about 50 years now, and maybe a little longer than that, but uh, the one of the coal seams caught on fire and it basically is burning underneath the town and I told that story to Noah and you know we're always talking about stuff like that and he enjoys history and you know it was good for me because I, I realized that he is listening to what I tell him because he went to school and was in history class and I guess was having a conversation with his teacher and told his teacher about a 
town in Pennsylvania that was on fire and his history teacher told him that he was crazy. There was no way that a place could stay on fire that long and, and uh, you know, basically that he didn't know what he was talking about until Noah finally got him to look it up on the internet, I guess in front of class, and, and figured out that it was a, a true story. And uh, it was kind of good for me because I realized that Noah was listening to what I told him. But I also said to Noah, I said, Noah, I said, I bet you was, uh, after you told him that, that you was uh, worried about whether he was going to be able to find the info or not, and whether that I was lying to him or not. And he told me that he wasn't worried a bit about that because he knew that I wasn't lying to him. And that kind of made me feel good about knowing that he at least trusts what I tell him. And uh, anyway, and then uh, he told me that he was, uh, I guess he was in the auditorium or in the gym or something the other day, and they was having some uh, awards given out, and he was uh, said he was sitting there just about asleep, and uh, they called his name out, and he had no idea that he was going to win an award, but I guess he won a, an award in the history class. So, uh, I thought that was pretty neat, but uh, it's nice when somebody is actually listening to what you tell them, and you know soaking it up and remembering it. So. Uh, everybody that uh, is happy that Noah's learning something, you know, he is absolutely learning something. This stuff's not just going in, he's, you know, in one ear and out the other. He's, uh, he's soaking all this stuff up because it's something he enjoys. And I was the same way at his age. And, uh, you know, I just, I rode my bicycle around looking for people to, to learn stuff from. And uh, that's one of the reasons I, you know, I'm able to even do what I'm doing is because of, of other older people teaching me. So, uh, Anyway, I appreciate everybody watching, and you can let me know your opinion on the uh, the mouse theory here. Uh, you know, we're just trying to, to get to the bottom of why, you know, these things are doing what they're doing as they're sitting, and to give us a little bit more idea, and, and you know, to be able to, to know a little bit more in the future when we buy something as to what, you know, the actual problem is going to be, but also, you know, what's causing the problems, and, and you know, it's uh, like an archaeological dig, right? So uh, appreciate everybody watching, and until uh, next time, bye.